a scion of many worlds. So, if light needs time to reach places, but so little that I can't see it, it's so fast that a light year is considered a very long distance, right? Zavaya asks Emmanuel as they sit on the rooftop of one of the higher buildings. Whatever Horus has done with the army from Miru, they were already gone. Funnily enough, without even seeming to notice she's ended up sitting in his lap, mostly because his fur was the softest and most comfortable thing to sit on. Yes, a light year is a fairly standard measurement for interstellar distances. The galaxy we're in is roughly a hundred thousand light years across. And to put things in perspective, Lacran is seven and a half light minutes away from its sun, a little closer than the 8.3 of Earth. Or a lot closer, Zavaya says, and he nods. It all depends on the scale of things. A single system is pretty small compared to the galaxy at large, but unimaginably massive compared to a single kingdom, Emmanuel says, and Zavaya lets out a strange sound as she thinks. Is that why you didn't think much of anything? You're used to fighting on such a bigger scale? Not so much used to fighting as getting ready to fight and on that bigger scale, but generally, yes. You just use like 20 words to say kind of, she says, and he chuckles in response. Sorry, the fluffy one is wordy, Emmanuel says, and she nudges him in the gut. The fluffy one, how many titles do you want? Yes, that's not an answer. Sure it is, it's just a nonsensical one. It doesn't even technically answer at this time. Yes is not a number. You're right, it's not. Now, Emmanuel begins before a tiny form darts over and Zavaya lets off a slight squeal of surprise as Magrika slams into him right next to her. His fur absorbs and dissipates the impact so well that the woman is giggling as she slumps into his lap and then leans back to look up at him and neither Zavaya nor Emmanuel are so much as ruffled by the impact that could have gone straight through a castle wall. Are you trying to kill someone? What? Was there no crash cushion here? It's like flying into a snowbank. The white stuff stops it from hurting. Magrika remarks. Perhaps not the way to speak with him about things? Lady Alur asks as she descends from above. She lands on his knee with a slight bend of her knees and straightens up to find herself roughly face to face despite standing up straight and him sitting down. I take it Yisa Reason has spoken to both of you, Emmanuel states. Oh yes, also something about a chat you're going to have soon, Magrika says. Very soon, unless I got the time on this wrong. Emmanuel notes as he pulls out his communicator, and Magrika reaches in between her breasts and pulls out a spear which she shoves back down. She then follows this up with what can only be regarded as a comedy routine as a bag of jerky, a laser cannon that had the undaunted symbol on the side, a sword large enough for Emmanuel to comfortably wield and, most ominously, a detonator that she plays with for a moment, are all brought out in quick succession before being shoved back in, and then she finally pulls out her own communicator. They're not that big. How did you fit all that between them? Zavaya demands, and Magrika throws her head back and laughs. Basic trick, girly. You need to get really good at it if you're going to be on the wing and moving around a lot. Anyways, it seems that the time is about right, so we need get moving. Have any of you seen where Isarizen went? As I was going to explain before Magrika distracted me, she's going to be joining the call early in order to have some extra time to speak with whomever is there first. She has questions. Oh, fair enough. Let's get moving then. So the full face veil was a wonderful idea, darling, and to be frank, I'm surprised it hadn't caught on as a cultural relic. Lady Tykanped outright gushes at Isarizen. The chamber the call is taking place in is a lot more formal than the small screens being used earlier. An entire wall was the screen, and it gave the illusion that both halves of the meeting were in the same room, just with a middle area neither could cross. The speaker of the council gives a nod of acknowledgement towards the joining group and turns back to Izarizen. 
Now, as to your plan to unify the breakaway empire back under you, there are several options. Pretending as if you had never noticed is a poor one as it will bruise egos and make those more reluctant to join with you again all the more so. I would recommend balancing between forgiveness and simple acknowledgement. No one likes to be proven wrong and fewer still like to be matronized, both at once will cause many of them to be outright spiteful towards you. So a very light touch is needed, but if done properly, then they'll reincorporate into your empire without being overly fussy. I see, thank you, ma'am, Isarizen says, and the white-clad woman nods grandly. Although, I hate to bring this up. However, your gown. She looks from Lady T. Canped's shimmering white dress that blends with her feathers to give an illusion of a more illustrious being to the fact that Emmanuel's stark white fur shimmers in an almost identical way. Yes, it's a very beautiful color. What's wrong with it? Emmanuel asks. Oh, nothing. It's just quite the coincidence. Iridescent white is a wonderful color, looking good on fur or feather. Although I must admit some pangs of jealousy that you simply have it rather than needing to use special formulae to achieve it. It took me being catapulted to the opposite side of the galaxy and then finding a way to ascend into a primal to pull off the look. Believe me, madam, it's easier to get out of a bottle, Emmanuel states. Very true. Now then, I've been told that you have a wonderful idea for a large ceremony to combine things together and that my insight as the Speaker of the Council would be invaluable. Oh, Yes, it was my idea. I, well, if all of Lacrin is to be brought together, then there needs to be something to bring it together. And if one of the big things about it is, well, Father and the Serpent Empress unifying as well. Hmm. So a wedding ceremony combined with a unification? It's also going to be a declaration of intent and a display of strength. Emmanuel adds and Lady Tycanped's eyes light up. Anything else while you're at it? Is there a particular political entity you'd like to declare war on? Perhaps a concept or people to banish from your territory? Sir Philip asks as he walks into the scene with a heaping tray of tea and all sorts of treats. But before we get down to brass tacks, who wants some tea and cake? I do, Zavaya calls out with an impish look. Of course, young lady. Sir Philip notes and then picks up a tiny silver bell from his tray and rings it once. The door opens and an exact double of Sir Philip walks into the room with Emmanuel, Izarizen, Lady A. Lure, Magrika, and Zavaya with an identically loaded platter. He sets it out, gives the room a bow, and leaves. Help yourself, please. Emmanuel's impressed applause results in a clattering clanking sound as his massively reinforced claws clap into each other. Tens of thousands of light years separate us and you still impress old man. Those crazy stories about you really undersold things, didn't they? Oh goodness, yes. Both my own redactions to prevent myself from breaching my non-disclosure agreements and the editors whom tried to make things more realistic. Sir Philip remarks with a small but deeply smug grin. How is it that England hasn't conquered Earth? The Queen was insistent on letting go of the Empire. That time is over, she told me. Sir Philip lies and Emmanuel raises a nigh-invisible eyebrow but lets it go when Sir Philip raises a teacup to toast him. I see. Now that we've established that the old man can reach out and touch people from halfway across the galaxy, Shall we get back on topic? You do know that technically you are older than I am? Sir Philip needles him. And yet I carry it so very well. Emmanuel volleys back. Well done. Have a cookie, young man. Sir Philip says, and the body double immediately reappears and hands Emmanuel a sugar cookie before leaving. Oh my God, man. Emmanuel groans before taking a sniff of the cookie and then tossing it into his mouth. Was it good? Zavaya asks in a petulant tone. There are more on the platter, dear, 
Sir Philip states, and she turns around to examine and finds out that there are indeed numerous sugar cookies hidden behind the slices of cake. And we are thoroughly off target. So this is going to be a unification and wedding ceremony with a big, bold declaration to the rest of the galaxy. Is the theme more healing or challenging? Lady Tykonpet asks. Healing, Isarizan states. I was thinking challenging, however you have been here longer. Oh no, both perspectives must be taken into account. Emmanuel, am I to assume that you're saying challenging due to wanting to portray an undaunted mindset? Yes. Whereas Lady Isarizan wishes to announce a greater age for her children and the home she has made, for all people of Lacron. I have focused on my children and family, yes, but I haven't forgotten the other peoples. This should be for them as well, for all of us. Unity and strength. These are two excellent concepts. To that end, hmm. Is there a crest or symbol for your lacron? Lady Tykanped asks, and from the glance from Isarizan to Emmanuel, she gets her answer. Of course not. So, children, once this meeting ends, that's going to be your homework. You need a symbol, something to unify Lacran. I suggest strongly that it incorporates both of yourselves in some manner, a symbol for you two to be united under, or better yet, three, or perhaps four. Four, Emmanuel asks. One will be that of the undaunted as you are one of them and clearly want to align your world with your own people, but you need one of your own. As you are stepping forward as a figurehead, you need something relatable. And I refuse to believe that after a thousand years there has been no symbol for Isarizen. Pick one of the, no doubt, many, many symbols your daughters have chosen for you and use that. The final symbol will be the two symbols you two have chosen for yourselves combined. That will signify unity and strength. So I can present as strong a front as possible, whereas Isarizen can be the great healer, Emmanuel says, and Lady Tykanped snaps out her favorite fan and conceals a smile at the absurdity of an Urthani being looked at as the strong front, especially next to a primal Nagasha of all things. But that's just how delightfully insane the galaxy has become in the last few months. Indeed, furthermore, it may well do to utilize the separate symbols of each of the nations that is swearing to you. A complete flag for the whole world, but all of them underneath your own. Although you will have to impress that it is for protection and healing and not subjugation. Even then, however, there are many people in any society who are more or less professionally misinformed. Sir Philip remarks, they make astounding dupes and sources of intel and subterfuge, so I suggest you take note of who raises those kinds of protests afterwards. Really? Emmanuel asks. You're going into a leadership position, young man. You need to learn a very important thing, that even dissidents have incredible use. A conspiracy theorist dedicated to proving you eat the souls of some group or another, or another such ridiculousness are often exceptional at gathering information, it's their biases and dementias that cause them to misinterpret it. But the raw data itself is often quite good. Keep an eye on them. It not only keeps them working, but they will nigh routinely dig up golden nuggets of information. Harsh. You can't help everyone, Mr. Skidderway, especially those that do not want to be helped. It's sad, but if they cannot be cured and are no danger to the community, then they're best observed and unbothered, Sir Philip says. How many times have you used conspiracy theories to your advantage? I'm afraid I can't give you an active number as it's in the process of increasing, Sir Philip says. Ah, indeed. Back on topic, Lady Tikanped says as she snaps her fan shut. We need to speak of the order of things, the decor, and the specific language used. And no, I do not mean galactic trade. That will be expected if you wish it to be more or less universally understood. I mean the level of formality and the specific terms. 